This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. And welcome everybody to episode 72 of the Animaniacast. Previously on Animaniacs. Yakko, you can't go this alone. It's insane, I tell you. Insane! Usually that's to my advantage. Where do you go, Michael? I don't know. But it's big and it's headed straight for us. Oh, my. And welcome once again to the Animaniacast. We are the only podcast out there that's dedicated to the animated series, Animaniacs. And here I explore the series, episode by episode, revisiting all the cultural references and gags that we can possibly find. And in the end, we give each episode a Water Tower rating. I am Joey, and joining me once again is my brother Nathan... But if you're not dead, how can you be talking to me? <laughs> and across the country in Georgia, it's Kelly. Hi there. Hey, Kelly. I I've, I could have sworn, Nathan, you were going to pick uh, one of my favorite lines from this this episode, uh, which was, uh, oh boy, I want to be dead, or something. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Same scene. Same scene. <laughs> same scene. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> oh, boy, do I want to be dead. Anyway, well, today we are going to be discussing episode 72 of Animaniacs, which includes the segments Deduces Wild, Rest in Pieces, and You and Me. And guys, what do you think? In a few words, if someone were to ask you about this episode, which I'm asking you, I guess, right now about it, actually, when I think about it, but if someone were to ask you about this episode... What would you tell them, uh, Nathan? Uh, it's a pretty good episode, I guess. It's got uh, a song in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Kelly, what about you? Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into our discussion about this, uh, this episode. Before we do, though. We've got to ask the question. Nathan, when did this episode... When? When, Nathan, did this episode first premiere? All right. Well, this episode first premiered on September 9th, 1995, which was a Saturday and was a week before last episode. It was also the same day as the uh, episode 70. Uh, This day marked the first day of the Kids WB block. In fact, this episode was the first episode to be aired on the WB Network as part of the Kids WB Saturday morning block from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. It was followed by the premiere of Sylvester and Tweety Mysteries, then that uh, Super Strong Warner's Animaniacs cartoon, and the premiere of Pinky and the Brain, the Freakazoid premiere, and Earthworm Jim premiere. It was also the same day as the Sony PlayStation was released in the United States, which would go on to sell more than 100 million copies. Wow, a lot of things happened today. So let's get this straight. <laughs> I'll talk about the PlayStation in a second. Uh, so this was the this was even though this episode is seventy two, this mm-hmm. premiered before episode sixty nine. Seventy. Seventy. No. It was, no. Yeah. Sixty nine was. Yeah, wait, wait, I'm not all out of order. So it was. It aired in between sixty nine and seventy. You could say that. So okay. All right. <laughs> so we're a little out of order. So episode sixty nine. Was on Kids WB though, wasn't it? No, it's uh sixty nine, I believe, was still on uh on Fox. Fox, that's and right. That was uh still season two. Boy, oh boy, we're in okay, but now we're all on right? Kids WB, completely on Kids WB, and this is yes. uh, just kind of grouped together in a big block to kind of cap off the uh the beginning of the Saturday morning lineup. I get it now. Okay, mm-hmm. so yeah, Earthworm Jim, I remember that cartoon. Not not so great. I don't. <laughs> I didn't really like. I like the, the game a little bit. The game looked cool. Um, mm. Sylvester and Tweety Mysteries. Uh, Kelly, did you ever watch that show at all? No. I, w- I would watch it because it was in between t- Animaniacs, but usually it was the the new episode would air after Sylvester and Tweety. It was. This is the only time there was two new episodes. So. Ah, I see. 
You could catch a rerun, then see Sylvester and Tweety, then see the new episode. Mm -hmm. And PlayStation, we didn't have the PlayStation growing up. No, we didn't. We were a Nintendo 64 house. Thank you very (laughs) much. (laughs) None of that, none of that other stuff. Well, before we get into our discussion of the main segments, we have to talk about what happened previously on Animaniacs. Um, (laughs) And... Previously on Animaniacs is basically a small segment that was written by Peter Hastings and directed by Liz Holzman. And essentially what happens in this is, uh, well, it happens like before any dramatic uh, TV show (laughs) to this day. They show you a lot of scenes that actually did not happen, of course, on the last season of Animaniacs. Uh, (laughs) Let's see what happens. There's a a courtroom scene. There's a, a lot of explosions from this one general <laughs> who keeps saying, oh, my. And then, uh, you know, an explosion happens. Yeah, He's, it's like Charleston, Charlton Heston, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Some, yeah, some people are saying it's a it was reminiscent of Charlton Heston, I'll say. That's for sure. Uh, but, the, you know, there's 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 just so many different action uh, films going on. There's a scene even with Babe Ruth saying he's going to hit a hit a homer for wacko as he's laying sick in bed and don't worry kid i'm gonna hit a ball right out of the park just for you gee that'd be great babe i don't know it's just a it's randomness (laughs) but it all caps off with the water tower exploding i can't believe it a water tower don't worry sims we'll be back we'll rebuild and we'll make a brand new water tower that's... that's... Exactly like the old one? Right! It's time for Animaniacs! Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it was a cute segment. I don't know what... Oh, I, I'll tell you one thing that was a definite... Um, a few cultural references in it real quick. There's a... The Graduate is shown with, like, uh, Wacko. With, like, Mrs. Robinson putting on her so- her stockings. A uh, very iconic shot with Dustin Hoffman is replicated with Wacko. And uh, Yakko starts saying, you're out of order and you're out of order. You're out of order. Do you hear? Out of order. No, you're out of order. You're all out of order. Uh, just like Al Pacino says uh, in, in Justice for All. Going on? You are out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. The whole trial is out of order. They're out of order. What do you guys think of this quick little opening? Uh, Kelly, any any of those little segments stick out for you as particularly cute or funny? Well, I, I thought the water tower exploding was dramatic. <laughs> um, I just, I, I thought it was cute. I mean, it, it just, like you said, it, it there were some references, but just overall, it, it it did capture that feeling of last week on whatever because everything was so well i mean for lack of a better word dramatic yes and they they took uh that general was was all you know there was a flash of blinding light and wacko in the hospital and the courtroom and the close up of the judge's mouth when he said you know life in prison and you could almost hear dun 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 at the end of every every moment. It was, um, you know, kind of had that feel of like you know soap opera. It did. It, all I can say is, boy, we really missed a really great episode of Animaniacs last yeah. time. Apparently, um, Nathan, what about you? Anything in here that really caught your eye? Uh, I just thought it was a very funny way to start the season off. Basically, like. If if someone was waiting three hundred and one days for the <laughs> or whatever, and then they're like, "Did I miss an episode?" Like, yeah, that's true. You know, should there be some kids out there like what? But <laughs> what did um, I miss? Very funny. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, then of course we get into our theme song, and we have a, a great little uh, uh, variable verse today, which is "No pain, no gainy." No pain, no gainy. And uh, Dot is exercising up a hill. She's doing her fitness challenge, so good for her. <laughs> and then we get right into our segment, Deduces Wild. And Deduces Wild was written by Sib Ventress and directed by Liz Halsman. And Kelly, tell us what happens here in Deduces Wild. 
Well, first I want to make a comment about the name Sib Ventress. Yes, please do. <laughs> because I I had to ask if that was even a real name because it really just put me in the mind of Asajj Ventress. Thank you. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I guess maybe they, they got that from a real person's name, but I just thought it was completely made up. So. We'll have to tweet Dave Filoni and see if, uh, if that has any... <laughs> Any connection at all? Because yeah, the name Ventress does it, it conjures up dark side to me as well. So I was very yeah, it's, it's not a common name. So no, I, no. I was struck by that first of all. But um, stunned to deuce is wild. The Warner siblings show up at uh, Sherlock Holmes' London flat, and uh, he sort of looks like the Basil Rathbone Sherlock Holmes, and. He's trying to ponder a case, and the Warner siblings annoy him endlessly. And uh, they are on a scavenger hunt to win guest appearances on Baywatch. Furthermore, you're on some kind of little quest. Correct again, but not just some little quest. We're on the greatest scavenger hunt of all time. Guess what the winner gets. I don't guess, I deduce. Well, I de Big Bad Wolf. But enough of that. If we win, we get to do a walk on on Baywatch. Hello, nurses on the beach. And so Sherlock says that he'll help them, but you know, first he's he's got to work this other thing out. And so he tells them to occupy themselves, and they do the most obnoxious, annoying things. And even Watson's getting on his nerves. He he's trying to figure out what Mar- his arch nemesis Mariachi is up to, which of course is a play on Moriarty, which is, you know, the Sherlock Holmes nemesis in the stories. And <laughs> Mariachi shows up and It means that he's on the very same scavenger hunt you are. What's the last item on the list? We'll catch him in the act. A fat chubby sidekick with a curly mustache. Ah! I have one of those. Watson? Watson? <laughs> So Mariachi has him, and, and he does have him in some strange flying contraption. It's the most ludicrous-looking thing ever, and he's got this big hat on, and um, not really a scary-looking arch nemesis, to be honest. We should mention and, he's Scottish as well, with a sombrero on his head and everything. It's very, right. it's, it's a very weird combination. That's what I'm saying. It was just <laughs> it, it made no sense at all. <laughs> so, so um, the. Uh, Warners get Watson back. They basically just make him magically appear out of Wacko's bag. And um, I guess they, they win the guest appearance on Baywatch. Yeah, apparently. Uh, yeah. So, and then Wally Lama can watch them. <laughs> <laughs> so. Perfect. Well, no, I'm watching Baywatch. <laughs> well, there we go. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, Pretty good uh, Sherlock Holmes mystery, I suppose, right? Um, I certainly didn't see a scavenger hunt being in, involved in a Sherlock Holmes mystery until this cartoon. So, uh, well, let's talk about any little uh, little connections there might be to some uh, cultural references and stuff like that. Uh, there is, first of all, a another jab at the show Bonkers which we haven't seen in quite some time since Slappy Squirrel, I believe. Look, I've told you already, I haven't the time. We don't need the time. Just this stuff. A happy postal worker. Edible fruitcake. A funny episode of Bonkers. I agree with that sentiment. Uh, <laughs> I, I did not like that show at all. It was such a ripoff, in my humble opinion, of Roger Rabbit. And I loved Roger Rabbit, but Bonkers, to me, it just seemed like Okay, this was just Disney's attempt to make something without Amblin being involved and have a character that looks and even kind of sounds like Roger Rabbit be teamed up with a a detective and uh, the results were not good. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) Uh, but uh, they pull out some of the things in, in Wacko's bag that they pull out. The Maltese Falcon is one of the things they pull out. Of course, is in reference to the movie. Uh, a, a lock of Yul Brenner's hair, 
uh, who, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is a very hard thing to get because uh, Yul Brenner is bald. So I don't know where they got uh, that hair from. That was cool. Uh, the Lusitania, which, of course, was the ship that was sunk and uh, led uh, the United States into World War I uh, because of, it had uh, Americans on, the board, on board the ship back then. Uh, a little jab at Burt Ward. <laughs> Burt Ward's career was was not to be found in the bag. It was somewhere in there, but apparently he couldn't find it. Uh, Burt Ward played Robin on the original Batman 66 series. And Burt Ward has a career. He's a... Uh, I think he's selling dog food right now. So he's, you know, he's doing a good job. He's, he's, he's making he re- money. Really? Like, yeah. I mean, as a spokesperson? He's, or no, he he's, actually- he's, the last I heard, he's actually, he, he makes his own dog food now. And it's supposed to be really good, like gourmet dog food. So that's, wow, that's, I know yeah, yeah. It's a, it's the things you find out when you listen to Kevin Smith podcasts every now and then. <laughs> 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 well, uh, let's see. Also, they, they throw out, uh, the Energizer Bunny was in there, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, do you remember the Darth Vader Energizer Bunny commercial? I do. That was so oh, good. Oh, that was so great. I loved it. I used to, and and I, I remember like taping that and just rewatching it. That was in the dark times, I did as they said. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was like before the special editions and all that, like before there was any Star Wars really going on. So when you saw the Energizer Bunny uh, fighting Darth Vader, or it was really Darth Vader swinging and missing the, the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> but when you saw that commercial on TV, it was just like, Star Wars is on TV. I know. <laughs> um, and it really, uh, there was uh, you know some other stuff in there, like Marlon Brando <laughs> was apparently inside the bag. And he was just, Marlon Brando was so fat, he just could not lift him out of the bag. He just said, trust me, he's in there. Uh, <laughs> and some of the references that I didn't really... Uh, get until i looked at some of our reference guides like for example they said uh that one of the things they had to find was princess Di in a leotard and apparently i guess there was a tabloid picture of that uh, some paparazzi people took of princess diana in a leotard and uh they sued the paparazzi in one for taking a picture without her permission and yeah but there you go. Another Princess Di and uh, Prince Charles uh, reference in there as well. So those are just some of the ones. I'm, there's others in there, I'm sure. But uh, what do you guys think? What are some moments that really uh, stuck out as uh, funny jokes? I thought it was funny how Sherlock instantly knew who they were. Um, but Dot said, ah, he just heard the theme song. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Are you not the Warner Brothers and their sister Dot? I'm going to flip all the cards. You are correct. Big whoop. He heard the theme song. Yeah. That, and oh, in that, hey, when they were doing that, uh, there was a What's Our Line uh, panel going on, which I don't know if either one of you have ever seen any of that old game show. That was from that, a game show from the 1950s, I want to say, where they would be, the panelists would be blindfolded and they would ask the person across from them uh, questions. And they would try to guess who it was. Like usually, it was a famous person across the, across from them. So you can find all those online. But it's a it's a pretty good, you know, old game show. You can actually see some real uh, notable people. Like Salvador Dali is uh has a great episode of uh being on What's My Line with all the panelists trying to guess who he is, and it's actually very funny. Uh, Nathan, what about you? Uh, I like. When they all say good answer again, just like in fair game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good answer. Those are the very things that Mariachi has been stealing. Do you know what this means? Uh, he's a thief. Good oh, answer. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. One. That's it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought that was funny, too, because that's one of my favorite episodes. So Yeah. Super it's, hilarious. It's, <laughs> classic line. Yakko says detective weird. I can't even say it how he says it, but <laughs> the famous detective or something like that. <laughs> and uh, Yakko has uh, double paddles like in Hearts of Twilight, which was fun. <laughs> he could do two paddles at once. That's his trick. Oh, yeah. that's right. I didn't even see that part. I Well, I saw it, but I didn't get the connection. Wow. Okay. 
Good one. <laughs> so yeah, I liked the uh, good answer. That. Good, answer. Good, good answer. answer. Good answer, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a fun, fun episode. Yeah, well, there and Yakko does have a few pretty good lines in in this one. He has a what's the whole thing where they say like I deduce, and he says, "Well, I de uh, well I de be ba- the big bad wolf or something like that." So mm-hmm. pl- uh, plays and then, on words. Uh, the whole keister thing is. Uh, fun little thing. <laughs> yes, we... it's, it's educational. <laughs> Keister, I've learned a new word. That's right, Wacko, and thanks to you, so has half of America. Half of well, I, I thought Yakko was very generous with the uh, ratings of uh, the, this episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that half of the United States would get this thing. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that is perhaps the best ratings of any <laughs> any, <laughs> any show, show ever, yeah. Yakko. But good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're very confident in this show, which you should be. You should be, of course. But <laughs> yeah, it was it was just a, it was a cute one, and of course, we all know that Be- Benedict uh, Cumberbatch uh, used this episode as a complete reference for his portrayal of Sherlock. Uh, I think it was the only background. No, he <laughs> very good episode. Oh, there was one the other thing that I thought was it could have been a little bit better. Um, like Sherlock goes to his closet of disguises. I'll need to don one of my many disguises. Disguise! Kind of like surprise, I suppose. They say it like surprise. Well, it's like UHF. Exactly. That's a, not as I, funny. It worked a lot better in UHF. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought when they go to the supplies closet. Hold on. I thought I heard something. What? I don't know. I just thought... Supplies! <laughs> And Except it's also it's kind of racist. It's a little racist, a little, of a, little bit. But they just said supplies. You know, it's like hey, it's it's a play on words, just like disguise, right? Sure, sure. That's 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 how you get away from any racism, right there. It's just that's what they're saying. <laughs> anyway, but yes, it worked better in UHF. I thought. Kids WB will be right back. Yup, after these messages, and we, we hope, hope that you'll be back too. According to legend, General Grievous was known to boast of the number of lightsabers he had acquired from the bodies of his slain Jedi enemies. Grievous was the first in a long tradition of collectors of rare items. A tradition that continues to this day on the RetroZap podcast known as the Dork Lair. Dork Lair. together across the television dial are the four greatest superhero podcasts on the internet. Green Justice and Arrow Podcast, Scarlet Velocity a Flash Podcast, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Case Files, and Terrigen Dreams and Inhumans Podcast. Join super friends Jovial J and Jedi Schwa weekly as they provide commentary and discussion on your favorite heroes. Only on RetroZap.com Hello! Genius people! Yakko Warner here. The only show we listen to in the Water Tower is the Animated Cast. I bet you can't guess why. Good night, everybody! Well, let's go ahead and get to our next cartoon, and it is called Rest in Pieces. And Rest in Pieces was written by Charles M. Howell IV, and it was directed by Adu Payden. And Nathan, what happens here in Rest in Pieces? All right, well, Skippy and Slappy are watching some old-timey cartoons starring Slappy uh, when she's all young and it's and fighting Walter Wolf, and they are having a hoot and a, uh, I don't know, some hoot sort and of a half? catchphrase. <laughs> yeah, sure, a hoot and a half. Uh, especially Skippy, he just loves it. Yay! You got him! You made him blow up good! What can I say? I'm glad to be a role model. Those old cartoons were great at Slappy. Telegraph for Slappy Squirrel. I love how easy it was for you to get out of his traps. I love how easy it was for me to get out of this chair. But then they get a telegram saying that Walter Wolf is dead, and that's when Skippy accuses Slappy of being a murderer. Well, you mean he's really dead? And you! You did all those terrible things to him! Hey! Whatever happened to go get a man Slappy? That's before I knew you were a murderer. They have to go to the funeral of Walter Wolf. Uh, cut scene two, Walter Wolf 
he's still alive. Uh, what? <laughs> and he's going to decide to attack Slappy while she is unbeknownst of his livingness. Uh, but no so... one's to us. <laughs> <laughs> Cut back to uh, Slappy arriving at the funeral. Uh, she has to give a eulogy, uh, and everyone at the funeral does not like Slappy because uh, they feel like Walter Wolf could have been so much bigger if it weren't for Slappy. Uh, she decides to go around back. She sees that Walter Wolf is still alive and decides to play a prank on him. Uh, so during the eulogy, uh, well, before she gets up there, she first. Uh, is supposed to stand on an X, but instead makes the squid guy stand out and he gets cut in half. And then she starts giving a eulogy and there are bombs everywhere. And every time uh, she finds a bomb, she puts it in the casket with Walter Wolf. Wouldn't he like to be buried with it? And then it explodes. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> so she does that uh, for a uh, rule of three. And yep. that is pretty much the episode, because then Walter Wolf lands and says, please don't hurt me anymore. Everyone in the audience gets really mad at him and chases him out the door. And uh, uh, just when you think it's about to end, then uh, what, what's his face? Um, uh, Beanie comes back with a, a lit dynamite candle saying, uh, you need to hold this. And then she gives it back to him and he blows up. So it's all fun. Fun, fun. And he gets buried, and for a second I thought he was actually going to end up under the ground, but he came up at the end. Because you can't... Yeah. It's like Slappy said. <laughs> she keeps telling you, you can't kill the cartoon characters. Cartoon characters don't die. Yeah. They can just get hurt. Tell Disney that. <laughs> exactly. Oh. He's falling. That's the only way to kill a cartoon, right? Disney? No, dip. That's the only uh, way. <laughs> well, like, I just, I know all the villains, they die by falling and... Well, that's true. The, <laughs> that's how Mufasa died too. Oh, that's true. Well, See, they all fall. Yeah, <laughs> all fall down. Anyway, <laughs> well, anyway. So if you, if it's not dip or a, a falling off a cliff, you're you're well. It depends on the cliff. Like the, I don't know. Let's not get into that. Anyway, because I was going to say Wiley Coyote should have died many many times if that's the case. But yeah. anyway. Uh, <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and get into our discussion of this episode. When it comes to um, references, there's, I don't know, there's there's not too much. I mean, there's, they mentioned Don Rickles. On with the eulogy. <laughs> <clears throat> We're all here to honor the late Walter Wolf. I believe it was Don Rickles who said it best. No. So I won't bother. Everybody knows Don Rickles from uh, his, vo- he voiced Mr. Potato Head in the Toy Story films. And he was, he was the nice guy, but he was also the best insult comic ever to live. He was, and he just died like a year or so ago, I think. So he died pretty recently. Just, just a, a great, great comedian. Just one of the most brilliant guys uh, I remember seeing growing up. I, I don't know. Have you guys have any familiarity with Don Rickles outside of Toy Story? No. No. <laughs> 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 he's 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 he has he's great you could see there's uh the sh- the show uh driving in cars with uh, uh comedians i think is that what it's called with uh, jerry seinfeld and uh that's all on netflix right now and uh there's an older episode with jerry seinfeld interviews don rickles and he talks to him about uh you know working with frank sinatra and everything like that and just don rickles just such a such a cool guy and you can still hear him if you go to Disney World and Disneyland. If you uh, go uh, talk to Mr. Potato Head, he's uh, he's out there in front of Toy Story Mania. So there you go. He lives on. <laughs> uh, Nathan, you mentioned the the worky, Walter working in threes with uh, the the booby traps, uh, and yeah, that's a a bit of a reference right there. The comedy references of things work best in threes i don't know exactly what the what the real rule is but i think it says like you can go up to three times doing something and it's funny and then it stops becoming funny at the fourth time mm. but then it starts but it get, eventually yeah it eventually it starts around. getting funny again because when it gets to it's 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 weird <laughs> but luckily they stopped at three for this one of course walter had a comic style this one will get her that slappy scroll. Needed everything in threes. Three mallets, three anvils, three bombs. A nice one, eh? I'm sure he'd like to be buried with it. Like a bunch of trained monkeys. One more 
reference, maybe, and this is really reaching, grasping at straws, the X that Slappy was supposed to, you know, stand on looked a lot like the X from Malcolm X, but the, the movie, but that's just my, I don't know why it would be that though. But then I started thinking it looked like the X from uh, Last Crusade, where they're like, X always marks the spot, you know? <laughs> so it looked, it looked like an I, I knew you were going to go there with that. Yeah, I don't know. But <laughs> maybe it's also because when I'm recording, I'm, I have Indiana Jones action figures looking at me. So maybe that has something to do with it. But whatever. <laughs> I I think you're just obsessed with Indiana Jones. That might be part of it. But that that's okay, because you know what? It's a Spielberg film. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so Nathan, Kelly, let's start with Nathan. Nathan, uh, what are some moments that uh, you, you really liked in this cartoon? Uh, Slappy uh, hit on Bonkers again, which was funny. That's uh, true. <laughs> and uh, I like the whole beanie trying to figure out uh, whether Walter Wolf is dead or not. It was a funny scene, so... And you're talking about when they're first in like the room before they go there, or mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And he's just saying like, "Well, yeah, why aren't you peaceful if you're all if you're dead?" You know, stuff like that. So, <laughs> I kind of hope that they they kept the secret that Walter Wolf wasn't dead a, a secret from the audience a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like, I kind of mm-hmm. hope that you <laughs> but know then that would have just come off as being really mean yeah but but i yeah but that's what i really would have hoped like like she would have been blowing him up but it would have been more shocking even to to us to go oh my gosh she's blowing up a person who's dead and then he would eventually say okay stop it i'm alive i wanted to trap you you know like to me i would have liked it more if sid the squid and you know was like i'm gonna trap her you know uh I don't know. I got really. I guess I would be really, really dark for a Saturday morning cartoon show. Yeah, but but Walter would still be alive at the end. He'd still be, you know, keeping it secret. But, but the audience wouldn't know. Like, yeah, did, did Slappy like bring him back to life through explosions? Or <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> and speaking of explosion, there was what that first one that he throws it that she puts in there, and that blows up his face, like disintegrates it until it's just teeth mm-hmm. and eyeballs standing there. Boy, oh boy, that was <laughs> that was pretty grotesque for yep. a, a explosion. Cool. It was, it, it looked, <laughs> that was something else. Anyway, Kelly, what's something you liked about this cartoon? I liked when uh, Slappy went up to the the coffin, and she's really laying it on thick, and like, oh Walter, oh Walter. <laughs> <laughs> Then she starts hitting him with uh, like a like a bat or something club, and um, just really just putting all of her acting chops in the whole thing. Yes. Oh, Walter! <laughs> Walter! 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 <laughs> That stuff will look great in the promos. I think, is this the first episode that um, Skippy was pitched up in? Yeah, he definitely sounded pitched up to me in this one. And, I mean, like, I listened for it in some of the other ones. Th- this one's the most noticeable for me. Yeah, I think many people say that this is the first one that Nate Ruger's voice was visibly pitched. Because going through puberty... Visibly pitched? Yeah, or yeah, audibly pitched. <laughs> <laughs> Noticeably, I could, I could just noticeably, <laughs> yes, noticeably pitched. <laughs> I could just see it in the way they animated him that his mouth, that his voice was pitched. No, uh, yeah, he, they did have to pitch Nate's voice in uh, these WB episodes. Uh, so sometimes you could really kind of tell, like he sounds almost well, not like Alvin and the Chipmunks, but definitely uh, a little even higher pitched than he was in earlier episodes so mm-hmm. it sounds like i got your can the uh, other squirrel sometimes oh yeah that was really bad that pitching i just annoys me yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh well okay well let's go ahead and get to our last little part right now which is called you and me Had 
a bag of fun down by the East Riverside. That United Nations there drives away a fella's cares. 183 countries meet down by the East Riverside, New York of 42nd Street. And You and Me was written by John P. McCann, and it was directed by Adu Payden. And, well, basically, this is the the Warner singing uh, kind of a take on the the old hymnal uh, down by the riverside, except they're uh, singing about the UN building. And this cartoon, if I'm not mistaken, I think is featured in uh, Yakko's World, I believe, in the CD. And that's where I was most familiar with it. But, of course, in this, it's uh, featured uh, in animated form. And... Uh, I don't know. Basically, they're they're singing about what the what what the United Nations does. They try to fix things, and in the process, though, the Warners are creating havoc in the United Nations. And I think they just caused World War Three by the end of it. Uh, but they take away their swords and they give them liverwurst. So I suppose they don't really really want them to uh, to fight, but they just like mm-hmm. causing havoc and ruining artwork and. Uh, <laughs> They're basically talking about how fun, I guess they, they're trying to promote the United Nations building. It's just a fun place to hang out. I think it's a very catchy song, so much that I will randomly start singing this song in my head to this day. Um, the Boutros Boutros Golly G uh, gets <laughs> in my head. <laughs> United Nations tries to fix Wars, famine, and oil slicks Boutros, Boutros, golly gee Down by the East Riverside Leads the General Assembly Boutros, Boutros, golly was the, of course, the the, uh, the leader of the UN the Secretary General And uh, I don't know how many years he actually served But not, not I was, you know, three or four years or something like that um, But great use of his name into the song uh i'm the only part i don't like of this song is probably dot's part which Mm -hmm. because the the notes are just i oh boy it just it just hits my ears the wrong way it that's just me dot no i i agree yeah (laughs) (laughs) when she says cafeteria i'm just like oh ah Like, I just, I don't like that part. But other than that, it's a really good song. <laughs> what do you guys think? What are some parts of this uh, song that uh, stick out that you like? Uh, Kelly, what do you think? Well, I was, I mean, I'm not so much, well, I guess it was in the lyrics, but I noticed that they were in a a gift shop, and I, I wondered if, if you can just walk into the UN building and go to the gift shop and the cafeteria. <laughs> they do take traveler's checks, which does make sense. Um, and I, I noticed, I thought for a second that the the German tourists, I thought they were the same uh, Swiss yodlers that uh, Pinky and the Brain created. Mm-hmm. But I don't. That's what I thought. Yeah, but it's it's not. <laughs> they just. I think one of them looks familiar, but unfortunately, they're all they're all different. They just wear lederhosen. So darn, I was really hoping for a, a great connection there. I paused it though and saw that uh, Yako and Wacko are reading a book called Girls of the World. <laughs> so <laughs> you can pick that book up in the UN gift shop, apparently. Uh, anyway, uh, oh yeah, and Pesto's in it too. Did you see that, Nathan? Yeah, like carrying a little leaf, like uh, a little olive branch. Olive branch, yeah. Yeah, but anyway. Uh, but it, what do you think, Nathan? What are some things that, you, that stuck out for you in this one? Um, it's fun. It's I, I like the last uh, line of the song, which is it could be worse. It could be singing one more verse because <laughs> <laughs> it was getting a little uh, uh, repetitive, I think. Yeah, uh, but it's very catchy, kind of too catchy. Yeah, and, uh, it is an earworm. I yeah, I like that the video has you know a story to it, kind of thing where they go to the UN, like Wacko basically messes up the translations and everyone starts fighting and then they, <laughs> you know, just there's a story to it where it's not just like cut scenes. So it's fun. That's true. Yeah. They, they, they go in there and they, like I said, they just mess up things. <laughs> they should. Yeah. They don't. pour soda on a painting and <laughs> get kicked out of the UN. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hello, listener. This is Jess Harnell, the voice of Wacko and Animaniacs, and you're listening to Animania Cast, which is the best thing you could possibly listen to, especially if you're not wearing pants. I'd love to go on talking to you, but I can't because I've got a potty emergency. See you later. Well, that just about does it for this episode. So let's wrap it up with a water tower rating. <laughs> So what do you guys think? Out of five water towers, how many water towers would you give this episode? Nathan, let's start with you. How many would you give? Ah, oh, boy. Okay, I'm going to go with three. I'm going to go a solid three just because nothing, like, jumped out at me. And, I mean, I like that there was a song. But it just wasn't my favorite song of Animaniacs. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to put it right at the same level as the first episode of Animaniacs. All right. So. And Kelly, what about you? I'll give it a three also, um, pretty much for the same reasons. I it it was fine. It you know, nothing bothered me or you know, I thought it was terribly unfunny, uh, but nothing stood out either. Okay. And I will we'll be in triple agreement on this one as well. I'm giving a three on this. So three threes. There we are. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, like you guys said, there's nothing horrible about this one. It was just, it was good. It was, it was nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the best part, I think, is that uh, the previously on at the very beginning. Yeah. And then, like, I, when I saw that, I'm like, oh boy. And then from there, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even though the, the Sherlock one, I thought it was, I don't know, it was, it was good. I just, it didn't, mm -hmm. some jokes didn't quite hit like they should uh i'm not and again i can't necessarily pinpoint you know here or there where it doesn't quite work all the way so i mean it's it's good it's it's more like <laughs> chuckle funny it's what or yeah. it's it's a this is funny it's funny oh, oh, what, <laughs> what is it funny <laughs> haha -ha, funny oh oh or uh, yeah, exactly. Not exactly uh, what, sure funny, what funny it is, but it's one of those. Sherlock Holmes was almost too silly at times, where like, you start playing the fiddle weird, and I'm like, mm, you yeah. got to be more of a straight person, or the sombrero hat picture. I was like, you should be more a straight person, and then... Yeah, it was kind of yeah. You can't. It's hard to have like the the Warners come into a, a wacky situation already. And, yeah. And yeah. So yeah, before they even knock on the door, he's doing a hoedown and everything. So I could see that. Yeah, that maybe maybe that's one of the reasons. I don't know. But let's go ahead and get to our poll question from last week. And to give us our results, let's see. Do it. oh great, we don't have the results right now. So that means oh? we have to go all the way over <gasps> to <gasps> our announcer. you to the announcer <laughs> for that <laughs> question was of course uh would you be upset if the uh original voice actors did not uh, were not asked to come back uh nathan would you be upset or would you not really care or would you be okay with it what do you think i'd be i'd be very upset there we go <laughs> <laughs> and kelly what about you i would also be upset yeah it, it seems like you know if they're there and they're willing and uh, yeah, it's I. But again, I I think it's if if I were to put money down, if I was in Vegas, I'd put money on 
they're going to be asked to come back. I think so, a lot of signs are pointing that direction, but who knows? <laughs> Stranger things have happened and have been happening <laughs> with this, uh, with the reboot. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully, who knows? Even by the time this is released, we might know for sure. But uh, we'll keep you tuned in as news develops on uh, the reboot. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll find out for certain. Until then, Nathan, tell us, what what is our poll for this week? Okay, so uh, the question is, what is the best slappy cartoon round four? Question <laughs> mark? Yeah, round four. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so the choices are No Face Like Home, Nutcracker Slappy, Three Tenors and You're Out, and Rest in Pieces. Uh, no Face Like Home is when she went to get plastic surgery. And Walter Wolf was there to uh, uh, attack her, and Nutcracker Slappy was all uh, done in the. Uh, it was like a ballet, basically. The three tenors and you're out was when they went to a baseball game, and Rest in Pieces was today's episode with Walter Wolf's funeral. Oh, well, there we go. So you can make your voice heard by simply going to twittercom animaniacast or simply searching on Twitter for hashtag animaniacast poll, and uh, yeah. Vote away and see which see which of those slappy cartoons is your best is your favorite. I already know which one I'm going to vote for, so we'll see if that one wins. I I yeah, I'm not going to say it, but you'll find out <laughs> next week. Uh, well, let's see. One little follow up, by the way, for last week before we close things up. Uh, you know, I was doing the show notes and everything, and I found a Spielbergian connection, another Spielbergian <laughs> connection to our last discussion which was talking about Variety Speak. And in Variety Speak, uh, Yakko says, uh, or one of the, what I think it's Yakko, but they talk about uh, Schwarzenegger doing King Lear. And of course, it's like, oh, there's King, everyone's lined up for King Lear. And it's, what a ridiculous thing. Well, a few years later, uh, in The Lost World, there would be a parody poster uh, created by oh gosh and now I'm totally forgetting his name. He's the gentleman who did a bunch of posters in the 80s and 90s, including the Star Wars Drew one. Struz- Drew Struzan, yes, Drew Struzan, I believe, made this poster, and it just says King Lear, and it is Arnold Schwarzenegger in a King Lear movie, and it, you can see it in the Lost World movie in um, one of the scenes that I try to block out because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> when the Tyrannosaurus Rex is going through San Diego, and I, I believe it's like at a blockbuster or something like that, or maybe a movie theater, but uh, yeah, you mm. can see that. So I don't know if I don't know if that's just a coincidence, but to me it seems like Spielberg, you know, being connected with both Animaniacs and obviously Lost World, that it, it might be more than just a coincidence. So, um, yeah, there you go. I put. I, Put that picture on our Instagram. So if you're interested in checking that poster out, uh, yeah, check our Instagram page and uh, see. Is it a coincidence? Read the book. Okay. Yeah, you decide. You decide. (laughs) All right. Well, let's go ahead and get to some contact information. Nathan, where can people get in contact with you online? Hey, uh, Twitter is my place and uh, Django FT is the the face. That's me. (laughs) And Kelly, what about you? Yeah, they can find me on Twitter at Yoda Princess, Y O D A P R N C S S, or email me, Kelly, at bigshinyrobot.com. All right. And as for us, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. You can subscribe to our podcast feed on iTunes, Stitcher, and pretty much just about every other podcast player out there that you can think of. And of course, you can go to animaniacast.com which will take you to our RetroZap archives. And speaking of RetroZap.com, you should head over there because they have tons of great articles and podcasts every single day. Uh, There are 21 different podcasts on RetroZap, and you can actually listen to every single one of those, get those delivered straight to your device by simply subscribing to the RetroZap feed. And I'll just mention a couple quick little uh, uh, podcasts that you could listen to. Uh, Hey, are you into uh, Disney and Star Wars? Well, listen to Skywalking Through Neverland. Are you into, uh, uh, 
you know, beers and Star Wars and stuff? Well, then you can listen to Brews and Blasters. Uh, are you into cereal and, and dad jokes and uh, retro stuff, like discussions about the upcoming uh, Ready Player One? Then maybe you should listen to Techno Retro Dads, because they love talking about video games and retro stuff like that. But there's so much more, uh, whether it's Star Wars or pop culture related, you can check it all out over at RetroZap.com. Well, that'll just about do it for us. So, for Nathan and Kelly, this is Joey saying good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds of the Animaniacs characters or any other Animaniacs-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Warner Brothers, Amblin Entertainment, or their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacast unless otherwise indicated. I just... I don't think I love you anymore. I don't know if I ever loved you. (laughs) <laughs> oh, Otto, I'm so disappointed! <laughs>